everyone. Welcome. Oh, I fell over my hoover. Henry, behave. Sorry. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Broken Wind Workshop. It's Laura here, and with the final instalment of the clarinet repair. I hope you've enjoyed this series. If you have, please comment, like, share. Share the Broken Wind love on different social medias. I have my Instagram now of laura.brokenwind or my Facebook page, the Broken Wind Facebook page. Find me. Um, and please, if you have any more questions, the next video I'll be doing will be the Q&A as I've had so many lovely comments asking different things about my career and my training and any tips and things. I will be doing a little Q&A video rather than answering all the things individually. So if you've got something you want to know, please pop it in the comments and I will look through and hopefully answer some things for you. So please enjoy this last instalment of the clarinet. The next repair, I'm not quite sure what it's going to be. I've got quite a queue, <laughs> which I can't complain about. Um, and there's some exciting news on the guitar building side of things too, so watch this space. Okay, so there we have it. The top joint has been repadded. All keys are back on. All corks that need to be replaced have been replaced. And uh, there's a couple of minor tweaks I need to do. So I mentioned before about regulation and um, I just had to leave off the padding because a bit of cork had come off up here. Um, and this screw touches on that cork. So this needs altering. And if you can see there, there's some movement there before if I then push hard, both both keys then move. This one moves independently. Let me add it. This one moves independently, but this one can move both. But there's a bit of what's called double action. So there's some movement here before it then pushes on both. So what I need to do is just alter the screw so that the double action in this instant hasn't completely gone. You don't want it to go completely because you don't want to find that one key's holding the other one open, but I want it to be the most minuscule of movements. There we go. I don't even know if you'll be able to see this. There's a tiny bit of movement before I then push so, over. so this is um this is the A key and this is the G sharp and there's just a tiny bit of movement before when the A before the G sharp comes to so that's done and then one way of just checking the padding making sure that everything is sealed is to blow down well you can blow down it it makes my ears pop so that's obviously a good seal or you can suck through and you hear the pop There you go. So the suck obviously proves that when you're sucking the air through, because obviously in a clarinet you don't suck up the instrument, you blow down it, but by sucking up it's obviously pulling all the pads in the ceiling so you can hear the pop so it's obviously airtight that way. And by blowing it's obviously making sure that there's nothing, maybe like a light spring or something that's making a pad push out when you blow down. So all good, happy with that, job done. And then the next bit is the bottom joint. All the pads are now done on this bottom joint. Um, basically exactly the same process as the top joint, which is why I didn't bother showing you, it's just the keys obviously in a slightly different way. Then what I want to show you, which is why I bo didn't bother showing you the padding here, is there's quite a lot of regulation, as I've mentioned before, certain key saps are shut at the same time. And this is the perfect example of these two, so I'll show you how we look at that in a moment. Here at the front, you have these two pads. Now, these have to close exactly the same time, evenly, to produce what's the lowest note on the clarinet, which is in E. Bottom E which actually is a concert D because clarinet is a transposing instrument. Anyway, um, what you need to do is use my feeler gauge like I was doing for the checking the padding and just see how it pulls. So I'm putting it down on this key here and you can see that's not really catching but this one is stuck. So I need to change the way that they work together. So what I'm going to do there is just get this one to come down a bit, a bit of manipulation. There we go, that's better. So this is still tight and this is pretty good too. And then you can check with the alternative fingering, which is this one up here. 
that it's, a, it's equal doing it the same way over there. And this needs a little bit more. There we go. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. And importantly, evenly tight. Yeah, nice and tight. Oh, that's mm, a little bit. So we've maybe gone a little bit too far over. I'll just manipulate the other way. Good. That's good, right. So that's done. But now, so that we know that they're working um, together, which is always a win. And then, what you can see in here is a thing I described before, which is the little crow's foot in here. Now you can see that this one, or at least I hope you can see. Let me try and get the angle right. There we go. This key here is touching it, but this one isn't. I can actually get my screwdriver in there. So what I need to do is make it so that this one comes down a little bit so that they're both touching and even. Okay, so now we're done. It's nice and even in there. Now there's no double action. They're not, there's not any movement before the actual key does what it's supposed to do, which down there is exactly what you want. Um, so what I'm doing now is just running a little bit of, this is cork grease, comes in like a little lipstick form and I just run a little bit around the the cork joints. You don't want too much because you don't want it to attract, attract a load of fluff and dirt but you want it to be able to go on nice and easily otherwise if it's stiff people that's when people start to bend keys and things and then I can just get these two together making sure I lift up this link key as I go together because we replaced the cork under here I need to make sure these are working in harmony so when I press this one it also moves this one because of this cork here now I can already feel without even needing to get the, the feeler gauge out that this key's not going down properly it's not going all the way down this one's going down too much therefore I need to take this cork down a bit so again I'm going to do it with a razor blade get in and just take a slice off in there again you can just do it with a little piece of sandpaper as well but there's quite a lot need to come off there so I thought I might as well use the razor and um, then we can start getting the feeder gauge out you can see that it's not even touching at all still we've got a little way to go yet yeah? take another slice better already. Let's see what the feeder gauge does. Okay so that's catching there and it's catching there. I actually want this to be slightly, ever so slightly lighter catch with the feeder gauge there than there. So I'm going to just run, take that last bit off, just run a little bit of 400 grit wet and dry underneath it and just see if that'll just take that last little bit off. That's done it. That's what we want. Okay, so there we go. So that's it together. Oops, something slightly sticky there. What's going on? I can hear something clicking. Let's see if we can work that out. <laughs> Don't want that. Too much noise for my liking. I found the problem. There's a tiny piece of cork. Had falling off right under that little bit there and it was hitting the body there we go so that tiny piece of cork has made a huge difference if you can hear now that's fine you can hear a bit of movement but you're going to expect that but there's no extra clanking so happy with that it's amazing what that tiny tiny piece can do i mean that was literally a 0.5 mil piece of cork so job to test it now put the bell bell on and this is called the barrel, the top bit here. 
And then this is uh, the mouthpiece, which the clarinet is a single reed instrument, so you have the reed there. Um, this is my math. This mouthpiece is nothing special. It's just a student one that I have in the workshop. I have a little stash. Yeah, I might be able to show you actually. Hang on. So these are my testing mouthpieces. So we've got. Um, it shows when I last used that one. It's got a spider's web in it. Need to clean that before the next one. So we've got bass clarinet, tenor sax, alto sax. That's where my clarinet one is. Soprano sax at the top there. Um, so I've got my own ones so I can test people's instruments on and then um, I have a little box somewhere over there where I have cornet mouthpiece, trumpet, euphonium, tuba so I can test um, the brass instruments too. So let's just check that this works. Oh, it's not a very nice read to be honest, it feels like a bit of tuba for. for the moment I just give it a little wet sort that out um, it's funny when I as a clarinetist I'm very particular about my reeds and how they sound and the tone I want to produce but for this it's just does it work now clearly notes come out but there's certain things we need to check so there's different ways there's different alternative fingerings in different places um and so we need to check that they actually sound right together that's slightly different at the end there so we need to just alter some cork to make that right. And for that I'm going to use just a little bit of paper here and it's because the corks were replaced they're sounding a bit fuzzy and a bit different to each other but you want them to be as clear as each other. So it's just a case of tweaking. Let me check that one. Pretty good. this one too. Happy with that. That's a lot better. And the same down the bottom here, there's an alternative finger in here. Can you see? It's, needs, it's slightly fuzzy. You need to open it slightly. Make sure it's clear. That's okay. I'm happy with that. sorted and all I'm going to do now is clean these ugly dirty mitts and wipe over one last time with a, a clean new one of these and make sure at the moment especially with joys of Covid and things I'm going to sterilise the inside having played it with um, a cleaning spray that is um, okay for the, to be used on the instrument. Please don't use anything that's not instrument safe or friendly for cleaning things at the moment. I know people want to be hygienic and of course it's important to do so very much so at the moment but please don't think oh I'll just put this down my instrument no if in doubt ask someone who knows please there's the last thing you want I saw an article um, fairly recently of uh, if you want to clean your instrument um, maybe um, just test an area first before doing it on the old instrument no please don't test an area on your instrument it's not worth it ask someone in the know and then if it's safe to do so, apply something cleaning, cleaning fluid or something to it. Don't, please don't, let's start. Oh, dread to think. Anyway, enough of that. One clarinet repad. I think the next in my queue might be a saxophone, possibly a flute. To be fair, they all need doing. See you soon.